Good morning, church. You are welcome to this month's book review. My name is Oladmidi. I'm going to be your host. This month, we have read the book By the Future by Dr. Mensa Otabio. The book presented one of the most remarkable stories in the, in the scripture as recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 25 from verse 20 to 34 about two young men. You know them, right? Yes, you do. Jacob and Esau. You know them, right? Awesome. All right, so the author presented the two young men as a nation, as a people, as a system, and as a value. To start with, we went to the street to know who people think they are between the two systems, between the two values. So stay with me as we hear from people. I'll be right back. Thank you. Isa or Jacob? Jacob. Are you sure? Yes. Why not Isa? Jacob is a go-getter. Oh, man. All right. Thank you. Esau or Jacob? Jacob. Are you sure? Jacob. Jacob. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Esau or Jacob? Jacob. Eh? All right. Thank you. Esau or Jacob? Jacob. Ah, Jacob. OK. Thank you. Esau or Jacob? Jacob. Ah, why? All right. All right. Esau or Jacob? Yeah, Jacob, okay, thank you. All right, bro, Issa or Jacob? Jacob. Hey, why Jacob? <laughs> All right, Issa or Jacob? Jacob. Why Jacob? <laughs> you don't know. So, so, so. There we go, Issa or Jacob? <laughs> Isa or Jacob? <laughs> Jacob, of course. Why Jacob? Why Jacob? God. Eh? Why Jacob? I prefer Jacob. Okay. All right. Thank you. Isa or Jacob? Why Jacob? He's a man of strength. No. No. All right. Thank you, Jacob. Isa or Jacob? Why Jacob? Okay. Alright, Esau or Jacob? Jacob. Why Jacob? Jacob. <laughs> Esau or Jacob? Jacob. Why Jacob? Jacob is a choosing one. Hey, okay, thank you. Esau or Jacob? Jacob. Why Jacob? I love Jacob. Okay. Alright, Esau or Jacob? Jacob. Again? <laughs> Alright, Mr. Tolu. Esau or Jacob? Jacob. Why Jacob? Because it's Okay, yes. not your finished guy. Well, that's Isa or Jacob? Jacob. Again? Jacob. Why Jacob? <laughs> Isa or Jacob? Jacob. Why Jacob? Jacob. Isa Jacob. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Oh yes, I am Jacob, I am Jacob, I am Jacob. I'm just wondering why everybody is Jacob. Mm, okay, fine. The question now is you, that you are listening to me now, who are you? Jacob? Esau? Okay, can you ask the person sitting beside you, who are you? Jacob? Esau? All right, all right, sit back and let's see what Dr. Mensa Otabu discussed as Jacob and Esau, nations, people, systems, and value. Thank you. Hi, I hope you know that the Youth Fellowship of El Shaddai Baptist Church will be going on a mission outreach on 26th to 28th of May 2023. And everyone is expected to pay a sum of a thousand naira for the success of the outreach. Yes, you can pay more than a thousand naira. And also, you can tell your friends, family members, colleagues, neighbors to also give towards the success of the outreach. Also, you can give relief materials as well, such as clothes, food, whatever it is you know you can, you can give towards the success of the mission outreach. Thank you and God bless you. everyone so quickly are we talking about Esau and Jacob's paradigm and how this affects us as individuals as organizations affects our personal businesses and nations as at large so let's dive into it 
Firstly, I'll be picking Esau. Esau was a skillful hunter, but he had his limitations. First, we see from the book that Esau ate all he had at once. So he hunted from the field, and the next thing that came to his mind was to kill and eat. He didn't think of saving for rainy days. All he could think of was to kill and eat. So if he was sick or something had happened to him and he couldn't go to the field, he meant he wouldn't eat. Second, Esau was mentally lazy. So when he had the option of selling his birthright, he gave into it. He didn't engage his brain. He could have thought of seeking counsel from his father, Isaac, to know what to do. And then I'm sure Isaac would have counseled him aright. He would have told him not to sell his birthright because of its importance. Second, he did not think of going to his mother's kitchen for food. He decided to settle for Jacob's bargain. Third, he didn't think of negotiating with something else. Instead, he settled for negotiating with his birthright. He could have settled for a wild animal in the field or something else, not his birthright. So are you Esau? Next is Jacob. Jacob was one who bought the birthright, the glorious destiny, the future, with the current resource he had, the stew. He was a very smart guy. So we can say that Jacob was not mentally lazy. Jacob was the opposite of Esau. So he understood that this guy had probably been coming to him for free food. And then he felt he wasn't going to do the same again this time around. So he asked for something. So he thought of asking for something, one. And he didn't just think of asking for anything, but something substantial, which was the birthright, probably to make up for the other times that Esau had collected free stew. Also, Jacob was one who reserved things. So he was a preserver. He was a rarer of animals. He knew how to save for rainy days. And so let's think about it. Are you Jacob? Do you have savings? If you're a part of an organization, can you say that your organization saves? So when there is extra profit in a business, do you spend lavishly or you channel that profit in such a way that the business grows more? Do you invest the profit? Think about it. Also, Jacob was innovative and dynamic. He thought of new ideas on how to do things such that his community, family, and everyone around him would benefit from. So Jacob is the kind of person to say, nobody has done this in my family. I think I want to try this first. Nobody has done it in my nation. I want to try it. Or nobody has done this internationally. And that is the very reason I want to try it. Unlike Esau, Esau feels, oh, nobody has bagged a PhD in my house, and so I don't think I can do it. Nobody has done this thing in my house. I don't think I can do it. So with this point, I'm sure you know where you fall into. Esau or Jacob. Next, I'll be talking about the four blessings of the birthright. So the first is the dew of heaven. Isaac blessed the son Jacob with the dew of heaven. And dew, we, as we know, is gentle, tender, and not easily noticeable. Unlike rain, rain comes seasonally, but it comes with so much pour. So which would you prefer, the daily favor of the Lord or the seasonal breakthrough you receive? As for me, I would choose the daily favor of God. The second blessing is the fatness of the earth. So Isaac blessed Jacob with the fatness of the earth. That is, he was going to be best at everything he found himself doing. So aside the abundance of things, he blessed him such that he becomes the best at everything. So if he chose hunting, he was the best. If he chose farming, he was the best at it. Whatever he chose, he was the best at it. Third is the abundance of grain and wine. So wine is a processed commodity, white grain a primary commodity. So Isaac understood this, that he wasn't just going to be, that is, Jacob wasn't just going to abound even in the little things, but even in larger things. And the little resource he had with him was to be channeled such that he becomes refined, processed, and valuable to everyone. Lastly, blessed him with the blessing of leadership. Leadership is the greatest of all blessings. And Isaac understood this and told and gave his son these blessings such that everyone around him submitted to him. 
So Jacob did not have to fight for the blessings. He didn't have to fight for submission. He didn't have to fight for followership. There were natural tendencies because of the influence he had in everybody's life around him, in the life of people around him. And lastly, I'll be talking about the points that stood out for me in the text. So Mensa Otabil mentions that you can make the sports page in a newspaper your priority and become a master in your finances. So whatever you give yourself to, you become a master of. Personally, I want to become a master in creative writing. It means I would keep writing every day and reading anything that has to do with creative writing. Second, he mentioned that you involved experts in everything you find yourself doing. So you know how to do a thing doesn't mean you should do it. What if another person can do it better? That would, that would yield a better productivity. Why not give it to the person? Third, he said, whether you sell or buy your future is dependent on the choices of today. And the choices of today are dependent on the paradigm you operate from, Jacob's or Esau's paradigm. And lastly, he mentioned that you do not have to use unethical means to access opportunities. So you do not have to lie. You don't have to bribe anyone. It will come to you naturally as far as you have chosen the right paradigm. Jacob lied. He told his father he was Esau. He could have just said the truth and then told his father, Dad, we took an oath. Isaac understood the importance of oath and he could have still given him the blessings. So these are the points that stood out for me in the text. Which stood out for you? I would say that you negotiate for the right paradigm. Negotiate for life. Negotiate for eternal life. And that is the best choice you can make. Having the life of Christ in you and then functioning from the right paradigm. In this, will you be successful? Thank you. A quick one. I want to inform you about the monthly activities of the Youth Fellowship of El Shaddai Baptist Church, Ibadan. For every second Friday of every month, we have the Destiny Night from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. It is a moment of worship, praise, and prayers where we get to travel in the spirit. You don't want to miss the experience. And for every third Monday of the month, we have the youth monthly meeting by 5.30 p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. where we get to share the word, interact with one another, and as well, praise God. You don't want to miss any of those programs. And yes, on Sunday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., we have the glorious youth service. See you there. All right, so as you have heard from the review, there's a need for us to engage some of the concepts that we have heard from the speaker. And I want you to pray. We are going to pray a very important prayer point, and that is God grant you wisdom to secure your future. You see, in the life of Jacob and Esau, we see a, a, a word of difference in the wisdom that they portray. So I want you to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, I receive wisdom to buy the future. I receive wisdom to act right. I receive wisdom to take the right decision in the name of Jesus. I begin to have directions for life, to know what to do, decisions to take per time. My today's decision will not affect my tomorrow's output in the name of Jesus. I begin to take pragmatic steps. I begin to take I begin to have wisdom of God in the name of Jesus, in my choices, in the name of Jesus. I have right values. I have right values. I, I, I attract right men. I have right negotiations on the tables of nations. As God is taking some of us to nations, to, to committee of nations, God is expecting us to negotiate out of the wisdom of the kingdom. That God, I begin to negotiate from the kingdom perspective. I begin to make indelible mark in my generation. I ask that, Lord, my everyday decision, it will portray the future that you have in mind for me. I refuse to bargain less. I refuse to live less. I refuse to make the mess of the little you have given to me. You see, Esau make a mess of that which the Lord endowed unto him. But if you get this right, as a young-minded person, I can assure you that you'll become all that God wanted you to become. Can you ask the Lord the little you have placed in my hands, I begin to make sense of them by the Spirit of the Lord. I begin to make sense of the little you have endowed unto me. Areas of life you are calling me, whether it is into ministry, whether into the academic 
academics, whether into the, in finance, whether it is in business, whether it, it is into entertainment. Lord, I begin to value. I place right value on my life. I place right value on my life in the name of Jesus. I place right value on my life in the name of Jesus. I will not trade away my destiny on the platter of pleasure. On the platter of pleasure today in the name of Jesus. I begin to buy the future. I begin to gain insight. The Bible says there is a spirit in a man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth understanding. Can you ask the Lord? Lord, understanding of the time and season so that I will not sell away that bad right you have given unto me. Some of us, God has given us awesome inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus. So God wants you to secure your future. God wants you to walk in the understanding of all of those great deposits. So can you ask the Lord this hour and say, God, I am a voice for my generation. So I refuse to silence the gift things that you have given unto me in the name of Jesus. Can you thank the Lord? Can you appreciate him? Because you will become indeed voice to generations. You will become a strong people. You will become a nation to other nations. Thank you, Father, because you've heard us. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Wow, 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 wow. It's been a nice time here today within the very short time that we have. I hope you are blessed. I hope, yes, I am blessed. I know what it means to be Jacob's people or Esau nation. Anyway, you can change. You can change. If you are Esau, you can change to Jacob. And if you are Jacob, there is tendency that if you are not being careful, you can also function in the ESO systems and value. So, thank you for coming to book review this month. The next month again, when we meet to discuss and to review another powerful book titled The Prayer of Jabez. Oh, that, that would have blessed me indeed. And cause your hands to be upon me and keep my eyes from evil, dear God. See you next month. Thank you.